So today I'm going to do a little bit of a video about this Raspberry Pi 5. I've got this one of those Neo cases because I'm running an SSD on it, NVMe SSD. But I've actually been using this as is and that's been fine. What these come with is a plug pack which you've got a USB-C cable with, right? You have to buy these 27 watt USB-C plug packs which run at 5 amps. Now what if you want to run it off something other than that, which is my case? Well, you get issues. You can get two problems. One is that the USB ports will be limited in power. You normally got 1.6 amps total across the USB ports of using the original 5 amp plug pack. If you're not using that, you only get 600 milliamps total across all of them. Right, so you lose one amp total. That may not matter to you. If you're not using many of the USB ports, it probably doesn't matter. But you're still going to get a message come up on the screen when you boot the thing up. I'm going to demonstrate all this in a second. Now I've actually resolved this issue already on my unit, so I'm going to demonstrate what it's doing now, and I'll show you what I did to achieve that, so you know how to bypass these issues with the power supply. This uses a power delivery identification with this power supply, so it notices a 5 amp supply at 5 volts. Although I say power delivery kind of is power delivery, but it's only negotiating 5 volts at 5 amps, that's all it does. It doesn't do any higher voltages at lower currents, which is a real shame. In my situation, I wanted to run this with a redundant power supply, so I actually wanted to have this so I could run off a 240 volt supply, in my case it's 240 volt in my country, and a 12 volt supply. Now I've actually got a unit built in my motorhome where this thing runs, because you manage events on that and actually runs a web server and stuff on it. What I actually wanted to do is have a dual supply going to it, which can then be paired down to be a single unit for this. So if the 240 volt dies or the 12 volt dies, it doesn't matter because the other one's still there, it's got a redundant system, so it helps to make sure that this will keep running if something goes wrong somewhere, okay? Which has happened in the past, which is why I want to have redundant power supply. Or if you just run it off 5 volts, you've got your own 5 volt power supply, you've got one of these you know, bricks or something you want to use, or some frame type chassis power supply, which can do like 8 amps or something like that, you never know, some kind of 5 volt supply. Other than the plug pack, then you probably want to know how to do this. Now this is one of the little tails I use. I picked these up from AliExpress. I'll chuck a link in down below. It's got a couple of wires on it. You can shove five volts into those wires and that will power something with five volts. You've got the G there for zero volts and the V for five volts. Do not inject anything other than five volts, otherwise you will blow it up. So I'll put links down below for that. And that's exactly what I use in a motorhome, except I also put my own wires on which are slightly beefier. And I also put on a capacitor across here. I put in a 100 microfarad cap across the terminal's wards so just to add a bit of extra capacitance right there. So if there are any like, instantaneous surges like you know it's running a CPU it does use high currents instantaneously it helps to cover that whilst the power is going through the long wire I've got running oh, quite a long wire it's probably about a meter long so I want to make sure that it's got a little bit of extra capacity I mean that's probably overkill probably didn't really need to do it but I've done it anyway just as a precaution no harm in adding a bit of extra capacitance capacitance is always a good thing but for you you can probably completely ignore that aspect of it I'm going to plug this in now demonstrate what we've got and I'll show you the modifications I've done in order to give you the ability to disable the error message that comes up. It says about the power supply not being able to provide enough current because of the power delivery not being specified and prove that you can run it like this. Anyway, that's enough waffle, let's get into it. So I've plugged in the HDMI, let's plug in the USB-C. So this is on our NVMe, so this boots up really quickly. I haven't used it with this screen, I don't think. Um, I may have done, I don't actually remember. We'll see what comes up. Here we go, found the spin up. Here we go, we're booted. I'll show you some stuff I had to do with this which resolves the issue. Now normally if you're running off a low power power supply, like a standard USB-C supply which can only provide 3 amps, you'll get a message pop up over here when you boot it up saying about the uh, fact that it's on a current limited power supply. Your peripherals won't be able to get full power and stuff like that. So that's one of the main issues you get. Or you may even get it so it won't boot at all, that's the other thing. But you also make sure that if you are bypassing these messages, that your power supply can actually generate more than 3 amps otherwise all you're doing is hiding it and you can end up with a system crash or something like that where it gets a brown out where the power's not sufficient so I've made some notes about things to do and I'm going to show you these first and then we'll go into it so there's a couple of things to do you first do this sudo nano boot firmware config.txt that pulls up the configuration file in nano you then insert this now I've actually got two things here which I've added this is because I've got an RTC and I'm using an RTC battery plugged into the board and I'm using a rechargeable battery. So I've done this to turn on battery recharging. Let's get slightly closer, you can see it slightly better. So that is the code for doing that. Now if you've got a rechargeable battery, you put that in. If you don't have a rechargeable battery, you don't put that in. That's besides the point, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this. 
full side current USB to allow non power delivery supplying the flow amps. This is quite widely publicised by adding that. That ensures the USB ports can provide full current. It doesn't limit the current to the USB ports. Okay, so if you've got keyboards or anything else that's directly plugged in, which requires more than 600 milliamps total, then you might need to turn that on. This doesn't solve the issue of the error message popping up though. So I'm going to go in and do this. We'll copy that. Go into terminal. Paste that in. Just trying to focus on me. So there's the config file. Let's scroll down with the mouse. See what we get. Now we've got two modifications in here. That's what we want for the USB ports. This bit there. And then this bit here is just for my battery thing, my battery modification. So you can ignore that. But that does the USB ports. Okay, so that enables that part. That's one of the things you have to do. Now once you've done that, you want to write it out. So you do write out there and then you have to confirm it and exit so control X to write out once you've done a modification right and then you do enter to confirm it and then you do control X to close it that's that one done now this is actually something I recommend you do as well is save notes about modifications you've done to your Raspberry Pi configuration so if you have to rebuild it or fix something or something gets changed in an update you can go back and verify these things it's a good thing to do now the other thing is the Raspberry Pi EEPROM changes. This is the main thing here. You have to do sudo into the Raspberry Pi EEPROM and I've got some modifications in here. This one's a boot order which is done because of the NVMe. Hold on, let's get closer. Right, so we've got boot order here because of the NVMe. I have to modify that because of that. But this is the main thing here. This, PSU max current 5000. We need to tell it that the power supply can provide 5 amps and we're doing that in the EEPROM. So let's grab this, copy that, shove that in the terminal. So that is that line there. Now if we take that line out or change it to say 3 amps, I'm going to change it to 3 amps. So let's change this to be 3 amps instead of 5 amps. Right? So now it thinks it's on a low current power supply. We'll do the write out, confirm it, close it. All right, it's just right, it's a new prompt, it's confirmed that it's it's done it. Verifying, done. Okay, so it's now said to the EEPROM that we've got a 3 amp power supply. Let's reboot and see what happens. Is it going to complain or not? I don't know, we'll find out. There we go. That's a message you'll see if you have a power supply which is not capable of 5 amps. But the power supply in this case is capable of 5 amps, so you've only told it it's capable of 3. So now we're going to go back into terminal, go in there, do up arrow until you find the command you last did. You can go back in there, and now we can go back down here and put it back to 5 amps. So that message is what you get if you're using a low power power supply or some other 5 volt source. This is basically bypassing the power delivery commands on that unit there. So, right out, done, close it, let it do the flash, done, that was a bit quicker this time. Reboot, because it doesn't take effect until you reboot it. And don't forget, we are actually using a Raspberry Pi power supply for this. So, right now, it wouldn't trigger that error anyway. That message that I put in a EEPROM file, that is not normally there. That's one that I added. Right? I found it online somewhere, I can't claim credit for the actual command. I didn't find anywhere documented telling you more about this particular command. This particular line right here is the key to solving that problem. Just put it in and it solves it. I spent a lot of time researching this and, and trying to find alternatives and, and other ways and this is the only way I could find to actually get this problem to work. Doing the code for the USB ports doesn't stop the area message. It gives you high current in the USB ports, but doesn't stop the area message. This is the only thing that stops the area message. Remember though, you are bypassing a protection system when you do this. You're telling it you've got a 5 amp supply. If you plug a 3 amp supply in, it's going to think you've got a 5 amp supply, and it's going to try and use all that power, and that may cause you issues. So this is something you do want to be careful about doing. Now, I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to plug in a source using this. I'm going to hook this up to a power supply. 
and pair it with this. Here I have a flying lead set up. I'm going to plug this into the back of the Raspberry Pi. My power supply is set up to provide 5 volts at 5 amps. I've got a bench power supply behind here. It's like a laboratory grade thing for doing electronics, which is what I do. So plug that in there. Okay, make sure we don't short anything out because that would be bad. That's all sitting good. So I'm going to hit the power button on here and power it up. 5 volts. Okay, it's sitting at 700 milliamps, 800 milliamps, 1 amp, 1.1 amps, 1.2 amps, 1.3, 1.8. See about half an amp now. There we go, it's about 560 milliamps sitting there like that. And so it's booted up and no error message. Okay, no message. And because the supply is capable of that, it's fine. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shut this down again. And I'm going to boot it up with a 3 amp setting. Okay, I'm going to adjust the current on my power supply to be 3 amps. And we'll do it again. This can now max out at 3 amps. Let's power it up. So it will still boot, even with that setting of 5 amps with a 3 amp power supply limit. It's still booted. In this situation, because it's not drawing more than 3 amps, it's still working fine even with a lower current power supply. So it could be safe, it really depends on what peripherals you're plugged in and what other loads you've got going on. It works. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you found it really useful, down below there there's a little thanks button. Click on that, give me a one-off donation if you want to contribute to the channel a little bit and reward me for my effort here. Or you could just share the video. That's really helpful. If you want to share the video, that's brilliant. Just click share. The more people that find out about this and spread the word to help other people out, even better. Catch you later.